Hey guys, um, got a new tutorial for you today. Um, sorry, it's been a while since my last video. Um, I've had writer's block and stuff, so haven't been able to really do much. Um, but anyway, today I'm going to show you how I made the bases in this track that I started working on earlier. <laughs> So, like, this isn't going to be exactly the sounds that I have here because I've done a lot of layering with, like, Foley and stuff like that. And there's not really much, uh, like, there's not really much that I can show you in a quick video about, like, all that shit. So, um, I'm just going to show you, like, the basic um, base that I made for it, and I basically just chopped it up then and started layering it with stuff. Um, so, this is actually a massive pre uh, preset that I made. Um, I'll probably put the, I'll probably put this up for download in the description or something. Um, it's not that complicated at all, but, um, like it'll probably just be easier if I put it up there um, so basically I've just got this chain here and then I've only resampled it once well I haven't actually resampled it at all I've just uh, exported it out to audio and then chopped it up over here so I'll start by going through everything that I've done in Massive itself um, so I'll turn all this shit off so you can hear what it sounds like by itself and this automation is pretty crappy like I, I've changed the automation a few times to get like a few different variations um, so basically I've started off with a smooth square um, I've macroed the wavetable position to macro 1 um, and so I can change the uh, like the overall sound a bit um, then what I've done is I've put um, a, a, a second macro on to the pitch like, uh, to use as like a pitch bend instead of having to go into the actual pitch bend to do it in there because it always messes up. Um, and then what I've also done here is I've got this, um, I've used this envelope as like a, like a, a pitch envelope at the start. So when I um, so when I change the overall sound, um, oh, crap, what have I done? Anyway, yeah. So when I change the overall sound here, um, it raises the it raises the um, pitch envelope level. So it has like a percussive start to it. Um, if that makes sense. Um, I'll try and show you quickly. Um, don't know if you can hear that properly, but because there's like distortion and stuff on there, but um, yeah, it's just to have like give it a bit of percussion at the start. Um, then that's all for this oscillator. Then for the second oscillator, it's just on the basic square saw. Um, it's sort of more square wave than saw wave, but there's a little bit of saw in there. Um, then I've done the same with the macro here, um, but it's basically just going down to turn into like a pure saw, uh, square wave. Um, then I've done the same with the uh, the pitch macro and the envelope as well. Um, so they're both pretty much the same thing. Then oscillator three is slightly different. What I've done is I've just um, it's just like a pure square wave, and I've assigned the amp to a separate macro. Um, just so when I use this, it kind of sounds more square wavy. <laughs> Just 
to get different tone, I guess. Um, then what I've done here is I've um, I've set it to the tape hiss noise um, and just like given it, it like put a bit of noise in there. Just I don't know, yeah, like I think it sounded a bit better after it got distorted and stuff with the noise in there. Um, so then what I did is I used a sign shaper. Um, again, I've just uh, set this to the first macro, so when I move this around, it adds slightly more um, dry, wet, and drive to, like in here. Um, that's all there is to that. Then I've got a hard clipper, um, and I've, it's about like midway dry wet and just under that for the drive. Um, and then the only other thing that I've really done is um, I have this this second envelope here that I'm using for this bandpass filter. Um, so basically, um, I've like macroed the attack. So like if I move this around it changes the attack for the cutoff value and the bandwidth back value up here. Um and then like uh I've set the the loop mode on to infinity and then just changed these to uh uh sign one point five. Yeah. Um, so like when I hold the note down, it kind of does like a wobbly thing after a while. And that's all there really is to that. Um, so then I just turn the master volume down a little bit and use the, the Brawner tube, turn the dry wet up a bit and I think I turn the drive down a bit because it's usually midway to begin with, I think. Um, then I've used a dimension expander. Um, like, yeah, again, I think I turn the dry wet up and then the size down a bit. Um, and that is pretty much it for the massive preset, I think. Um, then I threw a saturator on there, um, it's just set to the medium curve and I've turned the drive up quite a lot, turned on soft clipping, um, just, uh, just sounds a bit gritty and bigger I guess. Then I've done, I've used this EQ, basically um, I boosted the highs a bit with a high shelf because there wasn't really that much in there. Um, and then, uh, I'm playing the wrong note, like this song's in, in the key of F, so basically what I did was uh, I lowered the first peak here a bit um, and boosted this peak because uh, I like figured this peak kind of sounded um, like sharper. I, I can't explain it any other way really, but um, it I, it just sounded a bit better with with the boost there. Just sounds a bit nicer. Um, then I threw an amp on there because I throw amp on everything. <laughs> um, it's just the default blues um, setting with the dry wet turned down to nineteen percent. Um, then I used a dy dynamic tube, um, I turned it onto this C setting here, um, turned the dry wet up to 43%, um, turned the drive up a bit and messed with the tone a bit, uh, just made it a bit like, sort of deeper sounding, um, I can't really explain it. It's kind of subtle, but I thought it sounded a bit better. Then I think I did this afterwards, but basically it's just um, I've just automated a notch filter and then I have a 
low pass filter in parallel with it just so it doesn't mess with the lows at all. You can't hear the automation right now because it's, it's all here. But I, I just automated the frequency a bit. Um, then here I have an auto pan that I've just automated um, like with the phaser 360 degrees so it's basically just like I'm kind of using it as like I guess it's just volume automation um, and I've just automated the rate which I've set to um, like to like match the BPM of the track instead of using the Hertz mode um, and I've automated, automated the amount, that's what you can see here. Um, it doesn't sound that good by itself, but once you chop it up, you can, you can do cool stuff with it. Then I have another amp. Um, again, it's just the blue setting with 17% dried wet. Then I have another saturator on the medium curve drive up to 6 dB, um, dry wet down to 33%. Then I just got a, a glue compressor. Um, the ratio is at 10, the release is at 1.2, and the attack is at uh, 0 0.1. Um, I turn the threshold to negative 22 dB, and the makeup up to 15 dB. And then I just, uh, I've just automated like the macros um, and the filter here and I was just doing it randomly. I wasn't really paying attention to what it's like particularly sounded like. I just wanted it to like chop up and stuff. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, then all I did was I bounced it out to audio and started layering it with stuff to make like these kind of sounds. Like I, I did some high pass filtering and things like that and I've layered it with a sub bass as well. <laughs> you guys found that helpful and um, um, yeah like like comment and subscribe and all that stuff <laughs> all that bullshit um, and I'll be uploading like more tutorials soon I'll be doing some more serum stuff and all that just uh, like just gotta record it I have stuff planned already Anyway, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Bye-bye.